Hello and welcome to the latest how to make a game like Minecraft in Unity episode. We're going to be making a toolbar today. This was supposed to be the lighting episode, but uh, well, basically I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet and I ran out of time to figure it out if I wanted to get this video up today. So we're doing this instead. I would have gone for the full inventory system rather than just the toolbar, but there's quite a lot to get through and I, I really don't like having these videos being longer than an hour. <laughs> so uh, I'm breaking it down a little bit. We're going to do the toolbar first and then probably in the next episode we'll do the rest of the inventory system where you can actually drag and drop. What we're going to do today is just going to be a basic toolbar where you can select between nine blocks like you could in creative mode um, and you won't be able to change the blocks until we do the rest of the inventory system. I mean you'll be able to change them in the code but you won't be able to change them in the game like you would in Minecraft but we're getting there bit by bit. Straight off the bat the first thing we want to do is go into our world script and we want to scroll right down to the bottom to our block types and we're going to add a new variable in here we will call this it's going to be a sprite and we're just going to call it icon and then the next thing we want to do is we want to go into our player script and we're going to get rid of the uh, no sorry get rid of this no that's the one we're keeping sorry we're going to get rid of this that's the text that we have currently displaying what block we have selected we're not going to need that anymore so we'll just get rid of it um, and we don't need any of this because this is going to be handled elsewhere from this point onwards so we'll get rid of that as well we're going to leave the selected block index value that we have here and we're just going to be setting that from a different location from a different script so from the point where this value is set it will all work the same way it currently does we're just going to create a different mechanism for setting this value so if we go into our game world and if we look under canvas we still have our text here we can just get rid of that and we need to create now our toolbar so I'm just going to switch to 2D mode here. So if we go into our texture folder, I've got a couple of new images in here that I've added since the last one. These will all obviously be available for download. So the first one that we've got is our block icons, which as you can see down here is a load of blocks, but we, we just need to do a, a bit of setting up with this one. So the first thing we want to do is set it to a sprite, and then we need to set this sprite mode here to multiple. And then if we just quickly apply that, actually while we're down here, we'll uh, change these. It's less than 128. It doesn't need any compression and it wants to be set to point so that we don't get any blurred edges or anything like that. Remember, all Minecraft is sharp edges, no anti-aliasing or anything like that. So once we've done all that, we want to go into Sprite Editor. So we have our block icons. Uh, I've only put in the icons for the blocks that we have in our texture atlas, uh, not included. I think we've also got the furnace in there, but we're not bothered about that for now. The order of this doesn't matter at all. Unlike in the texture atlas where we actually have to have a particular order and that corresponds to the texture identification. Like we pass in zero, it gets the first texture and so on. This doesn't matter a jot. So the first thing we're going to do is go up here and we're going to slice it up grid by cell size. Each one of these icons is 32. So we'll just set that to 32. Leave pivot in center, that's fine. We don't need to mother with offset or padding or anything like that and just click slice. So what that's done is that has taken this one image and sliced it into, as it turns out, nine smaller images. So all we need to do now is if we just go to each one and we want to give it a name. The name is in, it's, it's entirely up to you what you call it. It just wants to be something that you can easily remember or you can understand when you're messing around with your code or something. I'm just going to call them the block name underscore icon. Nice and simple. So I'll just do that. You don't need to watch me type everything. 12 seconds later. So I've named all my icons now, as you can see. The last thing we need to do here is click apply up here and then we can close this and if we go to there now we see we can expand it and all of our sprites are here as individual sprites as though we would just imported them all as standalone images. So the next thing we need to go do is go to our world and if we, we ignore air block because obviously you can't place an air block start with bedrock and now we have this icon value here where we can drag a sprite in and we're going to do just that so this is bedrock so if i go down here find the bedrock icon and just drag that in there like that and then the same for stone and the same for the rest of them what we also need to do because there are nine slots in a in a minecraft toolbar we're going to need nine blocks to put in those slots now we have nine icons, but we don't currently have nine blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out the details for the rest of the blocks in here to get us our nine blocks that we need. And then I'll be back with you shortly. A few moments later. And we're back. I've got all my blocks here, uh, nine blocks in total. We'd like to say we're not bothered with the furnace, but 
all the details are filled out with all the correct faces. All of these blocks are solid. We haven't got around to transparent blocks yet, but that will be coming. And all of the right icons are currently selected. So the bricks icon has a nice bricks icon and so on. But that's not the only new image that I've got here. So we do have what I've called item slot BG. So again, we need to just uh, set this one up as a sprite 2D. This one is staying single because it's just one image. We don't have to cut this one up. And then obviously we want to, we don't need it to be set to 2048 when it's only a 16 by 16 image. No compression point. Then we'll apply that. And then we have one more and this one's called toolbar highlight. All the same settings as the last one. So now we are going to make a um, toolbar in our UI system and we'll start off with a panel. And this panel, we are going to anchor it to the center and bottom. So the width we're going to want this to be is 218. I know that because I worked all this out beforehand. The height is 26, I think. Uh, we'll get rid of the background image. And then we want this to be quite dark, not quite opaque, a little bit transparent. And we'll just call this toolbar. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're inside there, we're going to create an image. When I can find it. There it is. So this image is going to be uh, 20, 24 by 24. So if we see it, we've just got a little one pixel border around the outside. And we're going to set this to our item slot BG. So that's all that image is, is just the background for our item slot. So we'll just call that item slot. And then what we're going to do inside here is create another image. And this one is going to be what's going to have the actual icon image in it. So this one wants to be 16 by 16. No image color fully not not transparent at all and set to white and what we're going to do by default is disable that image because otherwise we have this horrible white square when there's nothing there so when we're not actually got an image in this slot disable that image script and we'll just call this icon and then just because in when we get around to the actual inventory system probably in the next episode we're gonna need to use this slot, this what we've created here, this item slot, quite a lot. So we're just going to create a little prefab there that we can use, and then we want to uh, we want to keep it anchored in the center, but we want it to be anchored from the left hand side. Uh, and actually, this wants to be zero. Actually, that wants to be one, just so we keep this black border all the way around. So now we're just going to duplicate this uh, nine times. So zero to nine yep and then we're just going to move all these along a bit so this one wants to be 25 this one wants to be 49 and you get the idea i'll uh, i'll do what is becoming a theme of this video and, and i'll sort all these out in order and then we'll rejoin you meanwhile and we're back again so now we've got all our nine slots all nice and neatly laid out uh we're going to move this down because we don't want it in the middle of the screen so uh, what we'll do is we'll set our Y pivot position to the bottom so then we can just tell it we want it to be so let's say five pixels above the bottom of the screen so there we basically got our toolbar now we need to make it work like one so if we go back to our textures we have that other sprite that I created toolbar highlight so we'll create one more image We'll call it highlight and we'll drag our toolbar, toolbar highlight in there. Uh, this is 26 by 26, I think. Yeah, that looks right, I think. Yeah, so 26 by 26, we'll keep it in the center. Oh no, sorry, we want it aligned to the left. So there by default, it's highlighted over the first one. And one other thing we can do, uh, just to make things like a, a little bit easier while we work it, I mean, we'll make this controllable a later date but for now if we just go to toolbar and we change the scale we'll just cut, make it two we double the size of this toolbar it and everything inside it so it's just a nice quick way of scaling the ui basically it just makes things a little bit easier to see so now that we've got this we're going to need a new script 
So we'll call this script, nice and imaginatively, toolbar. And we'll open toolbar. And we're gonna need a reference to the Unity UI classes. And then in toolbar, we're going to need a reference to the world. We're gonna need a reference to our player script. We're going to need our highlight and we want a rect transform because it's a UI element. And then finally, we need a, we need an array of item slots. Now, what are item slots? Nothing yet because we haven't created them. So we're going to create a class that we're going to call item slots. It's going to be serializable. Just for now, it doesn't need to be serializable in the grand scheme of things, but just to help us along while we're creating things, we're going to make it serializable. And all it's going to store for now is a byte that will be the item ID, um, which for now, think of it as block ID. Obviously, as things progress, we, you'll add things like a pickaxe or a torch or something like that. So it's not just going to be blocks, but it's all the same system. So we're just going to call it item ID for now. And, and a public image, which will be called icon. So then if we go back up here, we want a public item slot array, which we'll just call item slots. And then if we go back here in our toolbar, in our tool, we'll put our toolbar script on our toolbar object, and that should give us this array. And we know we want nine slots, because that's how many we've got. We'll just open all these up. So all we're gonna do now is we're going to drag each of these into here. So all this, this icon is just referencing the image that we put in here that is currently disabled. So I'm gonna drag all those in and then I will be back. Okay, so I've dragged all the image references into our icon image slot. Um, and the last thing we've got to do is we need to set this item ID. Now ordinarily, the ID and to be honest, the, uh, the icon image reference itself would be set through code, but we haven't got that far yet. So for now, we're just gonna set it in here. Um, and all we're going to do is we're starting with one because zero is an air block and we can't place an air block and we haven't got an icon for an air block so that will cause all sorts of errors anyway. We're just going to start with one and we're just going to go up the uh, item list that we have. So whatever order I've got them in my block types array, that is the order that they'll be displayed in here. I'm sure you understand that you can put this in any order you want. It makes absolutely no difference. If you wanted to start with nine and have seven in the middle and whatever, it, it really doesn't matter to the script. So we go back to our script and we're going to need a, um, a slot index reference, which is an integer. And if you remember how we set up our little uh, scroll doohickey in the player uh, script before we just deleted it at the start of this video so we could scroll through the blocks, this is basically going to work the same way. But before we get there, we'll need a start method and in our start method, We'll find our world of uh, find our world reference. You need to make sure you spell object correctly. And then we're just gonna loop through each of our item slots. And then in each slot, we're going to set uh, slot.icon.sprite, so that's the actual image that this icon is displaying, to world.blocktypes, and then we're going to get the item ID from our slot itself, item ID dot icon, and that's using that new icon reference that we put in our block types uh, class. And then obviously we want to enable it, otherwise it's not going to show anything. So what that will do now, if we press play, should populate our images with actual block icons. There we go, we have some blocks in our toolbar. Now of course we can't do anything with it yet. So we'll go back to our script and we will get that cooking.
And there's really not much to this. Uh, it's going to be in our update method. So much like we did in the player script before, scroll equals input dot get axis mouse scroll wheel and then if scroll does not equal zero that means that it is moving we are moving the scroll wheel so if we are moving if scroll is greater than zero that means we're scrolling upwards although it, it feels a bit weird scrolling upwards and going to the right so I'm going to swap these around from how we had it before slot index minus minus else and bearing in mind if we're in this code the scroll wheel is moving so there's only two options it can be moving up or down so if it's not moving up it's moving down slot index plus plus and then we just do a quick check if slot index is greater than now we know we know what our items well you know what we'll just use our item slots length if it's greater than item slots dot length minus one then slot index equals zero if uh, slot index is less than zero slot index equals item slots dot length minus one nice and simple and then finally we need to move our highlight position and the way we're going to set the position of that no oh, errant parentheses there ignore that uh, the way we're going to set our position is we're going to get the item slots slot index dot icon dot transform dot position so we're just setting it to the position of the image that we are going to be using to display the icon and then oh, there is one last thing we need we need to go player selected block index equals and then the i the actual id of the block that's in this particular slot go back to our game and now if we go to our toolbar we'll just close that um, we need to actually drag in our player and we need to drag in our highlight now that would have given us a few er errors um, right if we hit play and now as you can see we can scroll up and down our toolbar and select the different blocks which hopefully will all correspond to the icon that they've got. Ah, the dreaded cobblestone. And that is pretty much it. Um, as I say, I'm I'm gonna try and get <laughs> try and get the lighting system that I was hoping to use working. If not, I'll have to abandon it and come up with a different lighting system. Um, I'll just quickly show you why we're not using um, standard Unity lighting. Uh, so if I go to our materials here, uh, go to our blocks, and I change this to standard, we'll just make it not not shiny. This will actually have lighting uh, determined by the, uh, the what do you call it, the, uh, the sun. So as you can see, there's the shadows, it actually looks quite nice. Um, the problem is, for one thing, there's no way, or there's no easy way of determining whether you're in the darkness or not. I mean, there is a one. There is a way of determining whether you're in the darkness or not, but it's not as straightforward as it should be for Minecraft when you're dealing with things like mob spawning, um, whether certain plants can grow, all that kind of thing. You need to know specific values for for whether you're in the darkness and all that kind of thing. But there is another reason, and that is that the lighting is a bit weird with the way the chunk mesh is drawn. If you can see all these lines, <laughs> the light is creeping through the, um, the light's creeping through the seams basically between where the, um, where the each voxel is drawn. And uh, I'm not entirely sure how to fix that or if it even can be fixed. I think it's just a, an artifact of the way, I mean, you could come up with your own custom shader that takes into account this 
so you could use this nice unity lighting with your voxels but um that's not what I want to do because this is this tutorial series is meant to be how to code a game like Minecraft and Minecraft doesn't do it that way. Minecraft has a very specific system that allows you to have light levels on a particular block so it can say this block is below I don't know four in the light level therefore stick a creeper there. So we're going to be using a different light system I just need to figure it out. What I'll probably do in the next video is uh, the rest of the inventory system so you can pull up an inventory and you can drag blocks around between it and and get other items and stuff. But there's also uh, there's the foliage that I sort of thought I was going to do next but nobody seemed to want that one. And also some people wanted sound, some people wanted tools. Um, so there's plenty of stuff to get on. I just I really wanted to get that lighting working. So we'll see what happens next. I am taking part in the Ludum Dare challenge, which is it's like a game jam where you create a game within in 72 hours next weekend. So there is a chance that I might not have a video out on Monday. I'm going to get one out next week. It just might not be on Monday, but I will try my best. Uh, and that is everything for now. So um, I will uh, switch my shader back to the basic unlit shader and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.